I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you for having me again. The final round of primaries in the U.S. on Tuesday, the biggest bundle of votes of them all, California, Hillary Clinton thinks she's got it all wrapped up and is ready to be endorsed as queen or future queen, (laughs) perhaps. Uh, Does Bernie Sanders still have a bit of a chance? Well, if this were an honest election uh, and there weren't those bought and paid for superdelegates, it would be a race. Now, Bernie Sanders has actually pulled ahead in the polls in California, uh, but we're not really going to know until the voting is over. Uh, But at this point, Bernie Sanders supporters are just absolutely furious. They know the Democratic Party was working against him. Debbie Wasserman Schultz was just out there saying, I'm going to make Hillary the nominee and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so we're, we're hearing where the Democratic Party leadership is trying to figure some way they can get Sanders to stop campaigning after today so that Hillary can focus on Donald Trump and somehow woo Sanders voters to support Hillary. That's not going to happen. There have been polls among Sanders supporters. They are so angry over what is being done to them. Uh, that they're more likely to vote for Donald Trump than for Hillary Clinton. And it's about time the Democrats got a taste of what the Republicans went through in 2008 and 2012 when the Republican Party leadership was ousting Ron Paul. And so, uh, uh, but, but the message that is going out from all of this, the, the efforts to keep Trump out of the nomination, uh, the, uh, the efforts to make uh, Clinton the Democratic nominee, and the coming efforts to guarantee she steals the election. Uh, it is telling the American people that we do not, in fact, have a government of our own choosing. And obviously, by extension, we are not giving consent to this government because we didn't pick them. And so uh, the, the contract between the government and the American people is pretty much broken. Our government is not complying with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. They don't have our consent to be doing what they're doing. And... I keep thinking back to that saying that President John F. Kennedy uh, used to say over and over again, those who make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable. I really would not like to see that. The wrong people get killed and crippled in these things. But at this point, I am becoming afraid that it may be inevitable. There's a new book out about the Clintons called Crisis of Character. It's now a bestseller, and I don't think it's even really available yet or just has been made available. How devastating could this be to Hillary's campaign? Well, uh, that's hard to gauge. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, the problem I have with that book is it's a tawdry little tell-all. Uh, there isn't anything in the book that would be legally actionable. It's just out there saying Hillary's this nasty person. And it's drawing attention away from her email server uh, scandal and the potential espionage charge looking, uh, lurking behind that. And it's also pulling attention away from the Clinton Charitable Foundation and the racketeering charge that it is open to. Uh, and uh, so it's hard to say. But again, politics is perception. And if people are reading this book and coming away and saying that uh, uh, Hillary should not be voted for, then, you know, it's hard to argue with that. Uh, at this point, anything that gets Hillary out of the race is a good thing. The book's written by a former Secret Service agent. Don't they have to sign a confidentiality agreement? Well, I imagine they do now, but obviously this individual got uh, around that. But the, the Secret Service that served with the Clintons uh, was never shy about coming on out and saying that uh, really the way Hillary treated everybody, including Bill, w- was just absolutely shocking that her public persona uh, it is not what she's like in real life, that, that in real life, in the privacy of the White House, she was screaming at everybody. She literally would uh, issue an order that people were not to look at her in her eyes as she walked down the hallway. 
Well, I've heard of some Hollywood stars who do the same thing, but uh, they have a different case, don't they? Well, they have a different case, and we're not handing those people the keys to the nuclear weapons. Now, Trump, I watched John Oliver last night. Uh, actually, a very interesting thing. He bought up the medical debt of 9,000 people and then forgave them. I'm absolutely just, I, 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 I can't even begin to express how ad, much I admire him for doing that. And yes, he, he was sort of joking about now it's the single uh, biggest one-day giveaway in television history, eclipsing when Oprah handed out all those cars and everything. Uh, but uh, it, it was a wonderful thing for them to do. And what was, what was really telling was how it actually only cost them $60,000 to buy up all this debt, to forgive. And it, it shows you how debt has become an industry uh, unto itself, where they're buying and selling these debts and, uh, and, and treating the debt like it's an item of value and trying to maximize it. But you can't run a nation on debt forever. Uh, that's always been the primary failing of any nation living under a private central bank. And all of these nations that are under these private central banks are in serious, serious, hopeless, unsurvival trouble right now. Of course, also revealed on John Oliver's show was that Trump faces 3,500 lawsuits. And uh, as he ran off, uh, a very illustrative uh, comparison of if you watched every television drama about lawyers ever created, that still wouldn't be 3,500 episodes. Well, you need to be uh, aware that there's a term of crap called lawfare, uh, which is a, a, a contraction of legal warfare. And we're finding out that these lawyers who are bringing all these lawsuits against Donald Trump are close associates of the Clintons, uh, and the lawsuits may not even have merit, but it ties up Donald Trump and his resources in the courts, and of course the media is making a big deal about it. There's the lawsuit against Donald Trump's uh, uh, university, forgetting that the Clintons also own a for-profit university that's enmeshed in its own scandals. What was it called? Um, I'd have to go back and look, but the story is on the front page of whatreallyhappened.com. Don't they have to have accreditation to call themselves a university in the U.S., or can anyone do that? No, they have to have accreditation to call themselves a university, and that's easy enough to acquire if you can meet the educational standards. Uh, but, uh, again, education in the United States of America used to be about education and improving your prospects for your future life. Today, it's become just another one of these devices to plunge young people onto that debt hook uh, and it's so hard they can never, ever get off. Uh, and uh, more and more people are looking at a college education and realizing nothing of real use is being taught there anymore because all the skilled jobs and all the high-tech jobs, they've all gone to other countries or they're all being done by H-1B visa workers brought to this country. And colleges and universities which used to be places where you explored new ideas, they've become the most rigid enforcers of the status quo. They're centers of indoctrination now. And we're seeing uh, uh, various pro-Israel groups are, 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 are demanding these universities, ban Palestinian groups, ban any criticism of, uh, of Israel. They've succeeded out in California. Uh, they're pushing the idea of human-caused global warming. Uh, there, these university students are not being taught to think and analyze and solve problems. They're being taught to believe the official uh, uh, dogma of the United States government. And that's not an education, nor can you actually get a job with that when you graduate. Well, my wife works in the admissions department of the University of British Columbia's medical school admissions department. And, you know, they already have red flags for other countries uh, Asian candidates are very suspect for faking documents and so on. Should they fear that American applicants to the school should also be heavily screened? Oh, absolutely, because their uh, document mills, uh, or rather diploma mills here in the U.S. are big, big, big business. We've even had a few of our top politicians who got caught out claiming they had an M.A. or, uh, or, or an M.B.A., uh, and it turned out it was just a, a bought-and-paid-for piece of uh, parchment. It's interesting that Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, had a really vulnerable password, and it could have cost the privacy of millions of people. What was the password? Uh, it was da-da-da, D-A-D-A-D-A. I mean, that's utterly ridiculous. I mean, he's a big was fan of the police. Thinking? I was going to say he's a big fan of the police song, do-do-do, da-da-da. Yeah, I guess so, and I guess that's where it came from, but... Uh, even worse than that, it turns out Hillary Clinton did not even have a password on her State Department email account. Now, she wasn't using it all that much, 
because she had her private email server. But on her official State Department email account, she, she didn't have a password at all. Wow. Well, and of course, uh, if she wins the election, she'll have the, the so-called football that the Secret Service agent carries. I actually had a chance to be right up next to that between uh, President Clinton and President Yeltsin during the Yeltsin-Clinton summit here in Vancouver. Somebody asked me, how close did you get to the to the participants? I said, I stepped into an elevator and both of them were there <laughs> with their one with the Secret Service officer with the briefcase and the Russian military officer with his briefcase. So I was in with the presidents and the codes for three floors. Well, <laughs> my goodness, you could have started World War Three right there. Uh, yeah, Boris Yeltsin really smelled of vodka at 8 in the morning, which uh, apparently well, is his I, most I sober time of day. all politicians. I mean, Harry Truman used to, during the McCarthy era, Harry Truman always used to say about Joe McCarthy was carrying around that big briefcase. There weren't names of communists in there. It was just a bottle of scotch. And Canada's original Prime Minister, McDonald, drank gin in the House of Commons because you're only allowed to have water. Well, it looked like water. Yes. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. Michael, a new study says the U.S. has killed between 20 and 30 million people since World War II. We know about Vietnam. We know about Iraq. Where else? Well, the the, the U.S. has had interventions uh, in some 50 countries since the end of World War II. Uh, half of them have succeeded in changing the government to a pro-U.S. puppet, uh, the other half have failed. And uh, be, all of these interventions, after all these years, the numbers do add up. Uh, plus, there are people who, uh, for example, starved to death in Iraq underneath the sanctions program. And I remember the very famous comment by uh, 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 Barbara Bush when she was told how many people had starved to death because uh, of the sanctions. And she said, why should I waste my beautiful mind on that? Well, whether you, you bomb them or starve them, they're just as dead. That's absolutely right. But when you're trying to craft the numbers to look good or bad, uh, the U.S. acknowledges uh, people uh, killed in actual combat. They don't count the civilian collateral damage because that's very embarrassing. We know in the drone strikes, when they hit somebody they think might be a target, that anywhere between 20 and 50 other individuals get killed in the process. Those are very, very powerful bombs and missiles they put on those drones. Right. Uh, the Hellfire missile is designed to take out a 70-ton main battle tank, not a t Volkswagen uh, minivan. Especially in the middle of a crowded uh, market square. In Canada, the Fort McMurray fire still continues to burn. They're letting people back into the city, 88,000 evacuated. But the fire itself is now three times bigger than it was when it threatened the city. Why don't we hear more about it in the mainstream media? Well, there's a, first of all, it's a huge embarrassment for the government that wasn't taking care of keeping the dead brush under control, keeping the fire break roads open. Uh, they have uh, a major fire going on uh, in uh, uh, near Los Angeles, uh, which is raging out of control, and they're having to evacuate homes down there. And again, the same problem applies, because all of our money is being spent on war and Wall Street and Israel, uh, funds to uh, take care of the nation, keep the dead brush under control, do control burns, keep the fire break roads uh, bulldozed open, they weren't being done. And as a result, it has created this tinderbox situation uh, that, that could just spin out of control. Now, there have been allegations that uh, a uranium uh, concern wanted the land underneath that town in Canada, but didn't want to actually buy and pay uh, for the houses at full uh, market value, uh, so it's just easier to let the place burn down and then acquire the land for pennies on the dollar. Vancouver, one of the brightest, uh, beautiful cities in the world, does have a blight right in the heart of the city, the Granville Pedestrian Mall, crowded with panhandlers, uh, ne'er-do-wells, 
people sleeping in doorways and so on. And it doesn't appear that the city's doing much. But is this a problem that happens in every major city? And are there any solutions to something like that? Well, it is happening in every major city in America because of the economy. I mean, our government keeps on insisting we only have a 5 to 6% unemployment rate. But we now have more than 100 million Americans willing and able to work who have not been able to find jobs for months, in some cases years. And what the U.S. government does is it simply throws these people into a new category so they're not counted when they calculate that unemployment rate. The unemployment number of 5 to 6 percent are those who only lost their jobs in the last couple of weeks and have qualified for unemployment insurance. And once that insurance runs out, you're thrown onto the other list so that you become invisible. Now, uh, there's a major homeless problem uh, all over the country. It is not being improved by the influx of illegal immigrants and refugees who are being given preferential treatment treatment in the availability of housing. Uh, we're in the middle of another real estate bubble, which has made housing simply uh, too costly for ordinary people to afford. And yeah, everywhere you go, you're seeing homeless people. We've got a major homeless problem here in Hawaii. There are about 4,000 homeless people uh, here on Oahu alone. Uh, the state government just passed a new law criminalizing homelessness. What are you going to do? I mean, lock these people in jail. At least it's a roof and three meals a day. But we're on an island. It's not like these people can go to the border and step into some other state. And, and so they're, they're not really dealing with the problem so much as they're trying to make it go away so the tourists aren't bothered by it. Uh, but in the end, until we get the U.S. economy working for the American people again, things are not going to improve. Right now, all the wealth of the nation is being siphoned off to prop up Wall Street, uh, to, to prop up Israel, and to pay for these ongoing endless wars of conquest, which are now deteriorating into quagmires, meaning they're costing even more than the most pessimistic Pentagon planner expected. Well, the U.S. military, I know, in 2012 was supposed to have this miraculous uh, giant giga update where the soldiers would all have uh, automatic weapons that could zero in on a target without you having to have any skill. They would have invisibility suits. But because they spent so much money in Iraq and Afghanistan, that never happened. Well, that's not exactly what's going on. Basically, the military loves to play with a lot of these blue sky technologies. They have an actual uh, agency for it. The, uh, it's called DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. And a lot of good stuff has come out of there. But a lot of what they spend money on turns out to be complete and utter nonsense. And they'll come up with a demonstrator that makes it look like something is feasible and they'll secure funding. But when it actually gets down to putting it into real world practice, it turns out not to work. The invisibility suits only worked if you were standing near where the, you, know, you have to be in a certain place for it to work. Otherwise, it's very obvious there's something strange going on there. I mean, they had these adhesive squirt weapons and all this other stuff. Uh, but by the time it gets out there to the real world battle feed, it, it, it just generally doesn't work. It's just another excuse to take money away from the American people and give it to defense contractors and the Pentagon. And right now here in the United States of America, more than half of every tax dollar paid is going to the military. Uh, we spend more money on the machinery of death than the next 25 nations combined, 24 of whom are supposed to be our friends. Uh, and it's also spent very, very wastefully, where you have these boondoggles like the F-22, which is still asphyxiating its pilots. Turns out it's not as stealthy as they thought. Uh, uh, and I'll give you a good example. The uh, U.S. government flew some F-22s low across the border between North and South Korea to send North Korea a message. They got a message from China saying, by the way, those things are not stealthy. And as it turns out, stealth-designed aircraft are designed to defeat radars in a very narrow range of frequencies, usually in the very high targeting uh, uh, bandwidths. But they show up great on old-fashioned World War II vintage VHF radars. They're, I was just going to say that. Invisible. Yeah, I was going to say the old World War II radar was very long length. The, the one thing that was stealthy to it was the plywood-made Mosquito twin-engine uh, fighter bomber. That was an amazing, amazing piece of aircraft that, uh, that, that was developed. But again, Germany put a lot of money into these high-tech weapons, but they couldn't afford to deploy them in any kind of significant numbers. I think they only built uh, three of those Mosquitoes, two of which are now in museums. The, the, the V-1 buzz bomb was the world's first cruise missile. The V-2 was the world's first guided ballistic missile. 
and they did cause a tremendous amount of ruckus in Great Britain, but they couldn't put out enough of them to significantly change the outcome of the war. And, and Michael, maybe a big favor for all these people who have had Windows 10 sometimes automatically installed in their computers. It happened to me once overnight, and I took it out right away. But uh, apparently Windows 10 does something really bad to your computer that slows it down. What is it, and how can you cure it? Okay, well, there's an article on the front page of whatreallyhappened.com. What Microsoft has decided to do with Windows 10 is use your computer, your router, your bandwidth uh, to help send out software patches and updates so that Microsoft doesn't have to spend the money to buy their own update servers. And it's, of course, stealing your resources. And I'm sure somewhere in that end-user license agreement, uh, you have inadvertently agreed to let them do that because most people don't read those end-user license agreements anyway. But it is very arrogant of Microsoft to do that. And for people on metered Internet, uh, uh, this use of their machines as a peer-to-peer -peer software distribution system, along with the constant downloading of the Windows 10 update, is costing these people money that they cannot afford. Now, uh, there is a tool called GWX Control Panel. Uh, if you're already on Windows 10, well, you have my deepest sympathies. And there is an article on how to turn off this optimized update system, which is what they're calling it. They're not actually admitting what it does, but that's what it does. If you are not on Windows 10 and you do not wish to be moved to Windows 10, there's a very wonderful tool called GWX Control Panel. If you go to the front page of republicbroadcasting.org, they actually have a link there where you can get this tool. It's for free. And you can put it on your machine, and it will scrub your machine out of all the nagware and the pre-downloaded files. And you do need to keep checking on a regular basis because Microsoft keeps looking for other ways they can get past all of these defenses people are building. Michael, great advice for folks who may have found out their updated Windows 10 computer isn't as fast as they thought it would be. That could be the problem, couldn't it? That's a major, major problem. Well, actually, Windows 10 in and of itself is actually slower than Windows 7 and Windows uh, 8 because it was released without being optimized, uh, and Microsoft has done this so many times in the past. They'll release an operating system with thousands of known bugs and problems. They'll wait for the end users to find and identify and complain about the problems in order to fix them. Some of them never do get fixed. And then when you reach the point at which the operating system is actually stable and useful, it'll be obsoleted, and they'll start the process all over again. Uh, Windows XP is still very popular around the world. The U.S. government is still using XP. They've come up with a deal with Microsoft where Microsoft will continue to support Windows XP on government computers, but not you. You will use your Windows 10, and you will like it. Michael, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Michael Rivero, editor and founder of WhatReallyHappened.com. You can also find him on RepublicBroadcastingNetwork.org, right? Yeah, republicbroadcasting.org is the website. There are players there for the radio show from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. And there's also, of course, little pop-ups on uh, or little windows on my website that appear during the broadcast, and you can listen to it there. Thanks again, Michael. Thank you. My guest has been Michael Rivero. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Comments or questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. And just before I go, I'd like to thank all the veterans who fought on the beaches of Normandy on D-Day. It happened this date in 1944, the world's biggest seaborne invasion and because of the hard work of those men and women who risked their lives and in many cases paid with their lives, we still have the right to talk about the issues we talked about today. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.